It's the most magical time of the year, and I'm not talking about Christmas. I'm talking about the NFL season. So make sure you're ready with NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Get the most live NFL games all in one place. Right now, you can save $85 when you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket with YouTube TV. Sign up today at YouTubeTV.com slash Spotify. Device and content restrictions apply. Discount apply to first four months of YouTube TV, then $72.99 a month. Ends August 29th. Terms, restrictions, and embargo supply. No refunds. What is up, everybody? Eagles win 14 to 13, breaking down top takeaways reaction. Player of the game, Eagles in three words or less and more. Joining me, he is Shane Half at Shane Half NFL on X. What's up, Shane? What's up, Dives? This, I must say, this was a much more enjoyable second half than first <clears> half. Shocking. Literally, our second half adjustments during our halftime show. Thank you, everyone that tuned in. Was it's time for Tanner and McKee? to step in and shine and man he did we're gonna break it all down also joining us he is the ryan reese go give him a shout out on x at philly sports psa what's up ryan how much man ready to uh talk a little eagles patriots it was uh it was a good game and like you said it it picked up in that second half that's for sure yeah there's a lot of takeaways in this one um you look at keely ringo you look at kunya mitchell man i'm so excited for what we're going to see moving forward with uh, those two in the secondary. Uh, I thought the linebackers were terrific top to bottom. We're going to break it down. But um, look at these numbers from Warren Sharp on Kenny Pickett tonight. 11 first half completions, 0.7 air yards per completion, 17 total dropbacks, four sacks taken, 0.48 EPA per dropback. You look at the Patriots with Joe Milton drafting him in like the sixth round. Who would have been a terrific backup for Jalen Hurts? Shane, what's your takeaway? That Kenny Pickett stinks. I mean, (laughs) like I, I was, I, this thought crossed my mind during the game and I started thinking about how I would rank quarterbacks that appeared in this game. And I mean, Kenny Pickett's last, like Will Greer, when he came in for one drive, made a better throw than Kenny Pickett made the whole game. Uh, I would take Joe Milton over him. I mean, I'd sure as heck take Drake May or Jacoby Brissett wow. over him. I'd take Bailey Zappi over him. Kenny Pickett stinks, man. I there I was, you know, at halftime, I'm sitting here saying that, you know, they're playing Keon White and the Eagles are not playing good offensive linemen. And so... You know, if Kenny Pickett had to get into a regular season game with the starting offensive line and stuff, he wouldn't look that bad. I mean, the Steelers have winning records with Kenny Pickett and the Eagles have a better roster. But it's just a night and day difference when you see Tanner McKee throw the ball. And I, that's who I want to see. Um, you know, I, Tanner McKee was the second best quarterback on this roster last year and he didn't get the number two job. He's the second best quarterback on this roster this year too, and he's got to get the job. I don't care what they traded for Pickett. Uh, McKee should be uh, QB two. We have Chris chiming in saying Pickett should be cut after this game. Even Uh Will, hold my beer, Greer, finished with three of five passing for 35 yards. He did take a sack. I don't know why he left. I I missed that, but – Tanner McKee came back in and won the Eagles the game. But, Ryan, what's your quick reaction takeaway? Uh, listen, I, I think people are, are maybe overreacting to the picket thing just a little bit. Um, yes, obviously, we look at the Vikings and we want to see, uh, you know, a trade happen there. And that's, you know, again, kind of what we assumed uh, Pickett was brought in here for. But, listen, he was still 11 for 13. He's still figuring out this offense. It's it's still new to him. I have seen him do things in this league as a starter in real games that te- still tells me that he should be our number two. So the whole Tanner McKeith thing is, is a great story. He's great. He's awesome against two. Really? He's 
I'm sorry. I'm not. Really? I, I'm not giving Tanner McKee the QB two. I feel like we we watched just two different games. You're like, right. Two You're different right. worlds of football. I, I again that throw he made in the middle of the field that for that it was like twenty yard gain. That was great. Kenny Pickett can't make that throw in his sleep, dude. I'm sorry, bro. It's not even close. It's night and day. It's a different football. I I, I see it differently. I do. I, I <laughs> wish me I did. Sorry. No, I, no, I'm, no, not, I'm not giving play. up on the Kenny Pickett train. I'm not I'm not I'm not trading him for absolutely no effing reason. He can be successful in this league. He's shown it. Tanner McKee has shown it against third stringers. That's, That's the, t- the takeaway is how did the Steelers win with this guy? <laughs> it's the other way around. I, mean, I don't get it. it. You might be right, but it still wins. Wins are wins. <laughs> John says, grab your pitchforks for ticket. <laughs> Guys, we're going to break it all down position by position. Uh, we'll probably lead off with the offense, of course. Um, I wanted the Eagles to draft Milton in the fifth. Um, he, again, he was my, like, ultimate boomer bust pick in last year's draft i'm excited for him man and the eagles kind of made him look silly um joe milton two of seven uh 20 yards passing three carries for nine yards the eagles defense really showed up in the second half we're going to talk about that as well talk about steen's injury um it looks like it was an angle ankle injury he got rolled up there on that play um he was carted to the locker room um, we don't know anything just yet. It, I mean, Dave or uh, uh, Spuds talked about how they're hopeful about next week. We'll see. Hopefully it's precautionary. I am concerned about that injury, Ryan, because yeah. the Eagles cannot afford any offensive line depth. Whereas week one of the preseason, the offensive line was here. I think it was like here today. Like it wasn't as crisp as we saw uh, in the first week against Baltimore. Um yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I I agree. I I think I think I'd be a lot more alarmed and concerned if uh, you know Steen was the front runner for the right guard spot. Um, whereas the fact that I I truly believe that Makai Backton is our guy at right guard, Steen can provide depth not only at guard but can theoretically still sw- swap out to tackle. Uh, hopefully it's not kind of a long term thing and and he can kind of return uh you know when we need him if god forbid we should need him um so i'm not as concerned but i, I get what you're saying you know the depth already is not as deep as i think we'd like it to be uh this certainly takes a little wrinkle into that yeah um yeah kudos to makai beckton real quick the average height of the starting Offensive line is six foot six and three hundred and thirty eight pounds. Good luck, NFL. Uh, good luck trying to compete with that. I can't wait to see what um, uh, Shane can you hear us. Yes, I can't. Sorry, uh, I was so upset by the things Ryan was saying. I just couldn't take it. No, uh, we're, we're getting we're getting the first rain that we've got since literally the Fourth of July, and unfortunately in Oklahoma you don't get rain without ridiculous wind and lightning, and my power flickered and it killed my internet. But we're good now. If I disappear again, though, it's either because Ryan's being ridiculous or it's the power thing again. So you wow. never know. Wow, that's that's hurtful. <laughs> hurtful. Nick Foles is better than Kenny Pickett right now. I love these comments, guys. Keep them coming. Uh, we'll put them up uh, on here. Uh, we're about to get into this Eagles offense. We have Joseph in the house. Let's go, Birds. Uh, wasn't Steve grabbed by the ankle? But yeah, yeah. Not not that that stuff. Scary. Uh, Ringo should have been starting last season. Interesting decision at CB two this year. Uh, that is a great take. I, I did not like the play in the first half where he got beat deep, and then literally five seconds later. Um, he gets up and is doing his like best Jalen Mills impression, uh, acting like (laughs) he had anything to do with that play. He was lucky. He was straight lucky. The the ground made the wide receiver. I think it was Javon Baker, who is a great, um, I mean, listen, that's a, that's a cornerback staple (laughs) standing standing up and, and, and peacocking it out. No matter what you did or didn't do. 
That's just yeah. that's just what you do, unfortunately. That's that's I that's, I will that's, say on that one, um I, I I'll have to see the all twenty two view, but I'm pretty certain he was expecting middle of the field safety help, so he was playing low and outside. I I think it was less him getting beat and more expecting a safety that didn't get depth. I'm not sure though, but I saw some I saw some negative comments about Keely Ringo on Twitter, and I, I thought he played really well again. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really I could be wrong. I don't think he got beat so much on that one play, but even if he did, like, it, it's by a step, and it still requires a perfect throw and a tough catch, and it didn't come together. So there was one other one that was similar, like a guy got a step on him, but I never just saw a guy running free behind him or anything. I thought he played really well again. Yeah, even the times Keely Ringo is getting beat so far through two games, it's better throws and better catches. Like, uh, I, I have zero issues with Keely Ringo. And I think there's – I think the debate about Keely Ringo and Isaiah Rogers is just as interesting as Kenny Pickett and Tanner McKee. I, I, I don't understand – like, you heard Spuds at the end of this game praising – Kenny Pickett. Oh, they are so excited about him as their number two quarterback. I don't even know what what they're watching. Like, Keely Ringo has earned it, and we're yeah. we're gonna have that as a discussion on later shows. But he's been terrific. William says wasn't enough linebacker play for Ryan, so Shane had to leave. Um, <laughs> linebackers were terrific. We're gonna get into defense in just a little bit. Um, Pickett is still better than Marcus Mariota. And pretty sure I am better than Kenny Pickett. Trot is so good. He was know. awesome. Know, dude. Dude. Oh, so so many positives. Um, Evan says, how do y'all see this sh- the secondary shaking out Slay, Rogers, Ringo, Q, the Gene, CJ, GJ? Like, I mean, it, it's the versatility, like you said, is really fun. And um, I'll let Shane take it off while I get my daughter to sleep real quick. Yeah, I think I mean Avante Maddox, major stock up for him playing safety again. Yeah. Like, comes up with that pick in the end zone. Uh, I think they had him on, like, the stick nod route. The tight end had him to the inside. And I mean, he had good coverage, but a tight end should win that against Avante if the throw's on time and on target. But Brissett came to it late, and it turned into a scramble drill, and Maddox made a great play. I am, I am very in on Avante Maddox being a safety for this team. I think... He's simply too good of a player when healthy, which has been the issue in his career. Obviously, he's been banged up. Obviously, he looked terrible coming back last year, and I think it's pretty clear that he was just trying to rush back because he's looked good in training camp. He's looked good in the preseason. Avante Maddox is too good to not make this roster, but I don't see a pathway for him playing corner. I, I would put him at safety. Like I, I, He's my safety three right now if if I'm doing this now. How Cooper DeGean figures into that. Um, how Sidney Brown figures in. I mean, he. I love Sidney Brown. Avante Maddox is a better player right now, and you're trying to go win a Super Bowl. But I, I have major stock up on, uh, on Avante Maddox, major stock down on James Bradbury, making that transition to safety. He's got to go. It's not going to work out as too many talented defensive backs. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I when he made that pick, I honestly thought, all right, well, looks like he just made the roster because I, I, I th- honestly thought he was kind of on the bubble because, again, they have so many talented corners, safeties, you know, where, yes, you can move him to safety and he could kind of fit in there. But you also have Bradbury doing that. And, and, and you know, again, one of those two needed to kind of make a play to, to, to show that they deserve to be there and – you know, uh, with the amount of corners they have, it's, it's, I just thought, Hey, listen, Maddox made that play. It was a, you know, it was a bad read by, by Brissett and he took advantage of it. And that's what good vets do. And man, I, I just wish Maddox could stay healthy. It seems to be, he seems to have a lot of turf toe type injuries. And, you know, I really just hope, man, we can get a full season of Avante because I do love him. But I just, you know, again, I think he needs to prove he needs to be on this roster. Dives, you're muted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bradbury scares the hell out of me, guys. Like, um, I, I, my gut says he's probably on this roster. 
and he just can't tackle. Like you saw in the first half is not good, man. Like he cannot be on that football field. He's going to take snaps away from somebody. I mean, even like Tristan McCollum's out there making plays. Um, that is a concern. Uh, you think Ringo over Rogers, if I had to call it right now, Ryan, let's go. Ringo let's go. is my CB2. Ringo is my CB2. And that doesn't mean like he's getting the uh, a dominant amount of snaps over Rogers. I think there's going to be a solid rotation, just like linebacker. It's just going to flow and be fluid week to week to week. Shane, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I want it to be Ringo. I think the fact they're playing Ringo a lot more than they are Rodgers tells me it's going to be Rodgers, at least to start out. Um, and, you know, from what we've seen from Ringo, hopefully they're just making the right call and Rodgers has been that much better in practice. I mean, I'm not there, so I can't comment on that. Uh, although, you know, circling back to the Kenny Pickett, Tanner McKee thing, maybe their judgment shouldn't be entirely trusted either. Uh, mm -hmm. But... I, if I, I think what they're telling me with how the reps are shaking out is that it's going to be Rodgers, but it's a great problem to have if you've got a lot of guys that you're comfortable hmm. with putting out there. Um, William says, I'm encouraged by the overall defensive side of the ball. Uh, Richie says, Tanner equals Shane Falco. Pick, Pickett equals the quarterback that crossed the picket line in the replacements. I loved it. I love how Tanner McKee took a bunch of Walmart people and gave the Eagles a W tonight. That was awesome. Uh, Polly says, really enjoyed um, Kendall Milton's uh, goal to go plays and the two point conversion. Good to see Kendall Milton, who's yeah. had back to back really solid preseason. Solid. Yeah. Um, solid. And I mean, yeah, he's been solid. I, I hope they stash him on the practice squad. Maybe we'll talk about practice squad at the end of the show, or maybe I'll give guys that I think should be on the squad. Uh, on my final thoughts, I think Matt X could thrive as a safety. That's what he's going to be on this team. Bradbury can be a decision, a lot, a lot of money to cut for sure. Uh, curious why Nolan Smith. He's a, he's a lot of money to keep too. It's like a hundred thousand dollar difference this year, cutting mm -hmm. him or keeping him. So right. really, the money shouldn't play a role. It's it's getting the best fifty three on the roster. Mm -hmm. uh, excited to see Cooper DeGene. He is the wild card of this defense. Um, I'm just ecstatic to see how Vic Fangio utilizes him. Um, we haven't heard Eli Rick's name out there in quite some time. Uh, he is definitely on the out, right? Like, there's no way he's making this yeah, roster. Seems like it. You're right. Which is which sucks too, because I think he's good. I think Josh Job struggled a bit at times tonight as well. Um, I'm a big Josh Job's guy. Justin Simmons too old. Like that linebacker they got last year. Walmart people. <laughs> uh, love the aggressive choice to go for two points there by Syria. I love it, man. There, we, the Eagles have played a lot of passive football teams the last two weeks. It's preseason. Go for it. What, what's the difference? Um, Kellen Moore's play calls in those situations. The one play, Shane, where we had, I think it was, was it Will Shipley? On the two point conversion, um, on the two point conversion where they, they so they come out in pistol uh, with I believe it was two wide receivers to the bottom of the screen and they had one up at the top and they ran uh, motion basically to get it wasn't Shipley but they sent a receiver in motion across the formation and basically just had the receiver at the top of the screen push vertically to create a natural rub. And I mean, easy throw out to the flat. It wasn't Shipley. It was a uh, number 82, whoever 82 that is. Anaya Smith. Anaya Smith. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He caught that. Cool. The All right. Let, let's get, let's get into uh, the offense here. There it is. Uh, uh, Tanner McKee. We already touched on him. 15 of 1940 yards, 97.4 passer rating. Kenny Pickett, 11 of 13 for 67 yards, an average of 5.2. He took sacks again. I mean, if you watched our halftime show, I, I basically read the book on Kenny Pickett. I, I have no interest in going any further. Um, if he's not throwing a check down, uh, he's staring at the pressure and getting sacked. He can't move the ball more than 10 yards. He has a noodle arm. We've, we've talked about this the last two weeks. 
the dude is cooked. I thought Will Greer gave um, the Eagles some nice snaps. I mean, clearly had chemistry with some guys. Um, do we need to spend any more time on the quarterbacks or should we move to the running backs? Nah, let's keep going. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, for the Eagles running backs, Will Shipley had um, five carries for 15 yards, uh, mostly doing his damage through uh, the air. Um, since we're talking about running backs, uh, the one screen he caught where it was like a 17 yard gain uh, was the play of the first half. It was a, a rough first half for the offense. Outside of that, I mean, Kendall Milton had a, a touchdown. Um, Shane, did anybody like, uh, catch your attention? No, not really. I mean, the, the run or the run after the catch was really nice by Shipley on that one screen pass, but I really didn't notice a whole lot from any of the running backs, at least watching on the broadcast. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about running backs. Where I feel like last week they, I mean, obviously the, I think the offensive line played a much better game um in week one than this week but yeah let's roll on to uh receivers joseph and uh looked excellent tonight uh he finished five catches for 88 yards uh the one some of the catches he had on the sideline was terrific i don't know if it was a better catch or a better throw uh, but ej jenkins you know that tight end three role is up for grabs if there was anyone that kind of made some noise, maybe it was EJ Jenkins. It sucked to see him get hurt there at the end of this game. Ryan, any thoughts on the Eagles receivers? Yeah, listen, uh, Ngata seems to be the the latest in the you know Eagles uh, you know receiver that that plays great in the preseason, but you know unfortunately doesn't ever make the team. I, I, I unfortunately I don't ever see a scenario where he makes this team and no matter what he does in the preseason he looked great he had a good preseason he was making catches i just i just don't see it um as far that as was the, a big boy catch right there that was a it was it was a big catch but again you have to you have to tailor it to the you know whether it's second third you know uh you know, a team. They're, they're gonna they're gonna make a move for a wide receiver three at some point. I mean, they have to. They clearly have to. They have a need, and and what they have gotten so far has not been something that they can rely on. Um, and unfortunately, you know, Johnny Wilson didn't play because he was in uh, you know concussion protocol, uh, so we didn't really get to see him make any catches. As far as EJ Jenkins, I actually liked his game, and and there's an easier path for him to make this team than there is for Ngata. Um, you know, there's nobody in the tight end room that I feel great about outside of Dallas Goddard. So, you know, go good on EJ Jenkins. Cause I, there was a couple of times where I was like, Jenkins, who the hell is Jenkins? I was like, Oh yeah, EJ Jenkins. <laughs> and he was making EJ... play. So good for him. Yeah. I mean, EJ Jenkins. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I was like, is that Randy Moss? Get out of here. <laughs> Preseason Randy Moss. Any right. thoughts on the receivers today? Yeah, I, I mean I thought I thought is it is it Ingata or Nada? I don't know if you pronounce the G, but I thought it was Nada, but they were saying Ingata. Ingata. Yeah. Ingata. Okay. I yeah. thought, you know, I thought he had a good game, made a couple catches. Ryan's right, though. Like, I don't see a path for him to make the roster. When you talk about the glut of defensive backs you're going to try to keep, and the Eagles are probably only going to keep five wide receivers, and A.J. and Devontae are two. Johnny Wilson's making this roster. It probably one of John Ross or Paris Campbell, maybe both, or maybe they go get another guy, but... I just don't see – oh, Britton Covey. Britton Covey is going to make this roster oh, as, as a return guy slash receiver. Uh, so yeah. there's not room for a guy like Ngata, even though I thought he had some impressive catches. I thought there were some moments John Ross looked good, and then he leaves with a concussion. But, I mean, he, he, had, he had a step on Christian Gonzalez, who I think is a – I think, I don't know. I think he's a really good cornerback. I had him rated really mm. highly last year. He played really well for like four games and then had that season-ending injury. But I think he's really good. 
Ross had a step on him and Pickett just overthrew it. And he had another nice catch on a slant route. So uh, I was real down on John Ross last week. I thought for what, you know, he had the opportunities he had tonight. I thought he did an okay job. I'm still not comfortable with him as wide receiver three. But, you know, hopefully between him and Paris Campbell and Johnny Wilson, there's <laughs> semi-competency there. Did you see Greg Ward get uh, signed this week? He did. He did. I did not. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, everybody always made fun of me for my love for Greg Ward, but here we are. Still, no. still, still out there in the NFL. Are we comfortable with Paris Campbell? I, I don't even know if he makes his team. Nope. It's crazy. He, he had a grip. He had a grip on wide receiver three. And then he just let it slip away. Yep. Yep. Um, would love the birds to find an Isaiah likely type as tight end two. Okay. Trade Eli Ricks. We talked about this last week. Could they trade Prince the Tyler Lock at mm-hmm. corner for uh, a, a better piece, that wide receiver or tight end? Um, I've been hearing a lot of Adam Thielen uh, yeah. noise. I don't know what the truth to that is, but. They're going to make a move at some point. Uh, oh. Ross would have a better game if you looked over the correct shoulder earlier in the game. I agree. Um, it was slightly overthrown, but I, I'm, I don't like John Ross gives me too many Jalen Rieger vibes where he doesn't make plays on the, on the ball. Ironically. Yeah. They played him today, uh, but let's roll on to the defense who was the, the star of tonight's game. The Kobe Dean leading the way, Shane, five tackles. Um, I love the way. Vic Fangio is employing the linebackers so far this preseason. It's refreshing. We haven't seen it, um, th- this level of athleticism and speed from the Eagles linebackers in quite some time. Um, we all know that's what they're most effective at. But Dean had some moments. Any thoughts? Yeah, I thought Dean played really well. Um, he he chased down – or he immediately read a wide receiver screen and got out and made a good tackle – Uh, Shout out to Tristan McCollum, too, on that play, diving down, diagnosed it quick, forced the guy back into N'Kobe Dean. But N'Kobe made a good read and tackle on that one. There was another play or two where he shot a gap, like, immediately um, in the run game, and neither time (laughs) was he able to bring the guy down. But I thought he did a really good job. I thought he shined, and I thought Trotter was the same way. Trotter had a few really good plays in the run game. And again, didn't bring the guy down, but got penetration, disruption. So uh, I really liked what I saw from both of those guys. And I, it feels strange to have some confidence in the Eagles linebackers, hmm. but I kind of feel like I do. What world is this, Shane? <laughs> is this real life? Ryan, any thoughts on the linebackers? Yeah, listen, um, they have by far exceeded my expectations. That's for sure. Um, I, I to be perfectly honest, I didn't have a lot. <clears throat> so do, doing anything really, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But yeah, Dean, uh, Trot has certainly been a nice surprise in this camp, this preseason. Uh, and, you know, combine that with the fact that Bond, um, you know, again, kind of maybe hasn't lived up to what our expectations are. <laughs> I know the general person probably might not um, understand Bond in the general scheme of things, but um, it's nice to know that some of the other guys are, are doing their thing, and, and you hope that combined with that and Devin White, we might actually have a few linebackers. Yeah, it's it's good. Like It's been a really good week in general for the linebackers overall, not just the pass rush, um, which – I don't know how many times they got to the Patriots quarterbacks, but the pass rush was solid, but the linebackers in the joint practices and today uh, has been uh, a nice turnaround uh, compared to week one. Zach Bond, I thought, was terrific. He only had two tackles, but I thought he had some really nice moments mm. by far, like leaps and bounds better than his performance against the Baltimore Ravens. Does anybody else – deserve a shout out on the Eagles defense. Um, I mean, I mentioned Tristan McCollum earlier. 
I think he's going to push for a depth spot on this roster because he's showed up in both preseason games and played well. Um, but yeah, other than that, I I wish I would have seen a little more Quinion Mitchell. I feel like I didn't notice him very much. I'm going to be looking for him on all 22. I don't think he played a ton. I didn't really see the ball go his way much, so I want to take yeah. a look at him again. We talked about that at halftime. I wasn't sure if the ball, if the, like the Patriots were literally like scared to throw the ball his way, or he just didn't play as much. I'm, I'm that is a really great one. Um, Thomas Booker had big moments. Um, he only got credited for one sack, but I know he's involved in the other one um, by Terrell Lewis. Nolan Smith had a sack in the second half, but still struggled. I thought for me, Bryce Huff's uh, flashes in run defense were really impressive. Uh, that's what I'm excited to look at tomorrow. Um, that's an area that I am low-key concerned about. And I thought Bryce Huff, if he can bring that level of, um, you know, uh, stopping the run on a consistent basis, that is going to be huge for this Eagles defense. Uh, I don't know how much he played, not much, just in the first half, but he was all over the place. And I thought Moro Jomo uh, had really good moments in this one, not just, you know, you know, clogging lanes, but, you know, rushing the passer. This is a guy that, I think can really be DT four for this team. And I was excited to see Moro Jomo finally have his moment. I was expecting it week one against the Ravens. It didn't really happen, but tonight it did. Yeah. That, that made me, that made me smile. Uh, That's for sure. I think, I think everybody here understands the importance of, of, of the depth uh, of most positions, but I know we have talked about more, more Jomo, as far as being that DT four and and really kind of you know growing into the Milton Williams role, if you will, you know as as we kind of assume Williams might not be here uh, for, you know next year, and man, you know seeing him play out there really kind of gives you hope that he might be able to do that. Yep. All right, uh, let's roll to some comments. And then we'll get to some quick segments before we head out. Um, Williams says, I'm excited for Devin White. He seems motivated despite the hesitant, hesitancy and hate that he's gotten on <laughs> and the hate he's gotten on Twitter. Um, Nolan Smith, as bad as people talk about him, two and a half sacks the last three games. Um, the ball's not going a CB's way is a good thing. We haven't seen him in a while. Um, Nolan Smith had a sack. I'm concerned with edge depth. I mm-hmm. think it's under discussed hole for this team. And yeah. who's the ideal wide receiver three trade target? That is a great question. That's a great question. Any have anybody have thoughts on that? I don't have an immediate thought. I'd have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I, we'll I touch on like, that at the end of the show. Give me, yeah, give me like a, minute. a lot of options. All right. Let's get to our Eagles player of the game. Ryan Seacrest here. When you have a busy schedule, it's important to maximize your downtime. One of the best ways to do that is by going to ChumbaCasino.com. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino games like spin slots, bingo, and solitaire that you can play for free for a chance to redeem some serious prizes. So hop on to ChumbaCasino.com now and live the Chumba life. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Eagles player of the game. Ryan, this is your first post game show. Lead us off, man. You're going to go with this guy? Of course I am. <laughs> well, listen, in, uh, in typical fashion, <clears throat> I love my linebackers. And I know there might be some more, you know, obvious choices or whatnot. But, man, Nakobe Dean just absolutely made me smile from ear to ear with the game that he had and really gave me the hope that, you know, again, th- this this linebacker that we drafted in the third round and we all got excited that we drafted him later than he should have been and, 
man, it, it's given you some hope. And if he can stay mm-hmm. healthy, I, I truly believe that he can be a, a great linebacker for us. And you know, it's got to start somewhere. And this was a great game for him. And um, to me, it's always <laughs> been a focus for me, linebackers. And so I'm, I'm going to go to Kobe Dean for my player of the game. That's a good one. What about you, Shane? Uh, I mean, I'm going to go Tanner McKee. I, <laughs> going glad. into halftime, I was in a place of depression, <laughs> not knowing how I could make it through the second half of this preseason game. And enter Tanner McKee, uh, who oh on his first drive completed back-to-back passes over 10 yards. And Kenny Pickett hasn't done one pass over 10 yards this year. He breathed life into the second half so give me tanner mckee uh in all seriousness hyperbole aside he made some really good throws uh that that one that it was out of bounds the receiver didn't get his second foot down that could have iced the game that was a beautiful throw dropping that between a flat and deep zone he had a nice layered throw over the middle i thought he made some really good throws so tanner mckee uh definitely pushing for qb2 and i thought he played really well tonight i'm glad you took him i would have taken him if he went a different direction. Um, but the guy I want to talk about is EJ Jenkins. Uh, EJ Jenkins had what? Five catches for 47 yards. I thought he was involved in some really good moments of this game. Uh, Shane, you, you, you touched on that one uh, throw to the sideline. That was really nice. Um, but the one play where uh, it was in the first half, it was a third and short. Uh, it was an amazing Kellen Moore uh, play was orbit motion. They ran a fake inside zone to Will Shipley and ran EJ Jenkins in the flat for a first down. Um, I thought his chemistry with Tanner McKee was excellent. That throw on third and three on the out route was awesome. Um, and then, of course, the one handed grab um, and, uh, for 18 yards on the sideline. EJ Jenkins at that tight end three roll. I don't know what they're going to do at wide receiver three. Um, but tight end is just as much as in the air um, right now. So give me EJ Jenkins as player of the game, as a guy um, that hopefully he's healthy. Hopefully the foot is okay and he can continue to make noise week three of the preseason. Uh, We have a hot take. Nolan Smith is a bust relative to draft position. Hassan Reddick's success uh, body type is is the exception to the rule, not the standard. Smith is just too small. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I mean, I'm not in the habit of calling a guy a bust after a rookie season under an incompetent coaching staff, but it's <laughs> concerning. Uh, even his sack tonight, hmm. he, he he won inside, but he didn't throw a counter move. He just got chipped inside by the running back, and I don't think the tackle was expecting it. So yeah. uh, even his sack tonight was – kind of a fluke thing. Um, I think he's better as an edge setter in the run game than he, is, which is strange. Like a guy that small shouldn't be able to set the edge in the run game. And I think he does a good job of that. Better gotta, than it. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. He's just got to learn a pass rush move. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's get it. Uh, oh, go ahead, Ryan. No, I was just going to say, I, I just think given the limited snaps he got last year and you know, every, everything that he's kind of dealing with this year, I, I just think people need to give him some time. Like, I, I think he has the skill set. I think he could be uh, dominant. I think he really could be somebody that that that's you know wrecking up quarterbacks. But you know, I think he might be one of those guys that just takes a little longer than than most. So uh, I'm okay, and I'm I'm patient. So I'm I'm willing to give him the time. All right, let's get the team grades for tonight. A to F. Shane, lead us off, man. How would you grade tonight's performance? I'll give it like a B minus. Overall, like B, B minus performance. Um, This is worse than last week? Yeah. Really? I I mean, at least McKee was way better than last week. The first half, the offense was atrocious. Um I I didn't have as many exciting moments from like Ringo and stuff that I had last week. So I'd say I, I'll bump it up to a B. I'll give it a B overall. <laughs> I made you think. 
Ryan, how would you grade tonight's performance? I would say a B plus. Uh, <clears throat> I, I thought it was you know, a lot of different positions played really solid. And again, it, it's not necessarily the outcome with great uh, to always win, but I think it's more or less of, of seeing certain players do certain things. And I think we, for the most part, we, we got a lot of that tonight. We saw a lot of players do better than we expected. And, and there's hope. And that's really what preseason is about, is hope. Hope for the regular season. Hope for the future for these young players. And I, I was definitely hopeful after tonight. I agree. I'm, I'm higher on this game than last week. Like, yeah. like when we were on Birds of the Round Table, like we talked about the one thing I wanted to see from this game. It was better linebacker play. I wanted to see hope, optimism uh, from this fluid linebacker rotation that we're going to see all season long, whether it was Nicobe Dean or Trot or Zach Bond and, or Devin White. Like, I am hopeful for this Eagles linebacker position for the first time in a long time. <laughs> and that's a take. That's a take because it, it's been a long time where the Eagles have – just been picked apart uh, repeatedly over the, the recent years. So uh, it's a B plus. The fact that we're, we're seeing, I guess it is the Patriots, but it is very promising. Uh, so give me a B plus for this thing. Now we're going to get to Eagles game, three words or less. Guys, if you're watching this live, let us know in the comment section, what is your uh, explanation of the Eagles game in three words or less. Let's get it. Eagles game in three words or less. I'm going last in this one. I didn't even think about this yet. Shane. So I'll go over to Twitter and uh, yeah. you guys every week after the game, go over to the Eagles pin poll Twitter account at Eagles pin poll. We'll put up a tweet and you guys can drop your three words on there uh, and we will try to get those <clears throat> out. The only one that we got today, new thing we're starting up here. And of course you guys drop them here in the comments live on YouTube too. Uh, but we got a link to a South Park clip, which is not necessarily <laughs> a show that I've watched. Uh, but the caption is they killed Kenny. So <laughs> maybe one of you guys can give me the context on that. But that's, that's so our good. three words or less from Twitter. Uh, it came from Johnny on Twitter. We've also got some good, good ones here in the comments. Uh, Josh B says worries about defense. Uh, Sam says sin pick at home. We've got a defense looks better from William. So William and Josh need to get together and balance this out. We've got a worried about the defense and the defense looks better. Um, we've got from H H H H Kenny Pickett. A sucks. It's a lot of H's. Uh, Kenny Pickett induces a lot of Z's, but uh, then we've got from Martez Andrews coaching is excellent. So there's some three words. Uh, again, we want this to be your guys' segment. So, be sure you go and do that right after the game on Twitter. You can also do it here if you're watching the live show, but uh, I got, I got a kick out of the worries about the defense and the defense looks better back to back. All right. All but... Shane, do you have a Eagles in three words or less? Um, shoot. I was all, I'm always looking at the other ones. I forget to come up with one myself, Ryan, <laughs> give me yours. I'll, I'll steal one. I'll come up with one while you're doing it. Linebackers look great. Yeah, that works. I'll, I'll allow it. All right. Um, it's been a while since I've thought that and said that. All right, I've got mine. Motion for two. Nice. <laughs> motion for two. So <laughs> Kellen Moore getting that motion play for the game-winning two-point conversion. I love to see that. I'll yeah. say, yeah. No, I'm not going to. The one I just had off my head is kind of similar to yours. I'm not going to do that. Um, Kenny Pickett sucks is a really good one. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I've been killing Kenny Pickett. You have. Oh. Um, it's a damn shame. 
I'll say go Nicobe go. Um, I, I, I am obviously one of his biggest fans. Um, this go. is a huge, huge week for the Nicobe Dean fan club. Um, whether it was joint practices or tonight, um, you saw it all week. First team reps. We'll see what happens. I think, again, it's going to be a fluid situation with Zach Bond and Devin White with Trot Jr. and Nicobe Dean um, going in and out of the first team. I'm excited to see how it plays out. I'm excited to see what it looks like in week 10 and week 14 and week 18 in the playoffs. That's a good one. That's a really good one. But we talked about that last week. Um, so give me go Nicobe go as a guy we really need uh, to kind of uh, pick it up. So yeah, right. Can I, can I add a second one of uh, sure. leave Kenny alone? <laughs> leave him alone. <laughs> These things. All right. Uh, that about wraps it up. Let's go around the horn. Final thoughts on this one. Uh, Shane, you're up, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'll answer Williams. Uh, I've had a minute to think about it now. I'll answer Williams' question about the ideal trade target for my final thought. I don't know if they would do it. Um, but if they would do it, Darius Slayton from the Giants would be a great wide receiver three like target. It. You think about the Giants not really a contender, uh, not even close to a contender, but they drafted Malik Neighbors. They went out and they got Allen Robinson. They have Wandell Robinson and Jalen Hyatt, who are younger guys. And then they've got Darius Slayton, who's on the last year of a deal. He would save him. I looked up his contract. He'd save him like three and a half million if they got rid of him. Uh, and then he's gone the year after that anyways. He's never had an 800-yard season in New York. I think he's a solid receiver. He can play inside. He can play outside. Uh, I'd be really excited if the Eagles went and threw a day three pick at the Giants for Darius Slayton. I think that'd be a, a great move. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not going to say that out loud. Um, wow. Ryan, uh, Shane, anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, just Eagles Pin Pull Network. Make sure you guys are following on Twitter at Eagles Pin Pull. You can go interact with the three words post there after the game. Also, follow the podcast feed wherever you stream your podcasts. Uh, like I said, we're going to have six shows a week for you guys. The draft show starts next week, so we'll be at our full six shows a week. Uh, really excited to go through this football season with you guys. I, I love how like I, I made a tweet of Tanner McKee saying he's got an elite arm and like he's just 26 years old. And people actually took that literally. <laughs> anyway, what a world. Ryan, final thoughts, plugs, time to uh yeah, listen, it's it's great to see decent linebacker play. Um, I, I, you know me, uh, anybody who knows me knows that I have been screaming for linebackers for decades. And listen, I, I think the, the two that we have that are kind of, again, young, trying to build themselves, uh, Nicobe Dean and, and Trot Jr., I think have a potential to be solid linebackers. Uh, maybe not you know, this year, maybe not these starting guys, but, but I, I think eventually um, there, there's hope. And honestly, hope is the only thing that I, I, I've been wanting um, for the linebackers. So, uh, but yeah, to, to reiterate what Shane said, Eagles pin poll, uh, please make sure you support, uh, give it a follow, give it a like, you know, all the other uh, crazy things that social media tells you to do. Just blindly do it. Eagles pin pull. Just that's all you need to know. And tell your friends. And then tell those friends to tell their friends. Uh, but, yeah, you can kind of find me all over the place. I'll be, uh, you know, on, on the Eagles pin pull doing shows with these guys. And, um, yeah, I'm around. So hit me up. Uh, we have 865 people watching right now. Wherever you're watching, yeah. make sure you like this video. Help us get this content out. Seriously. Um, Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everyone, for commenting. Uh, we'll be back, of course, Tuesday night for Birds of the Round Table to break down more uh, Eagles versus Patriots, all 22 highlight reels, winners and losers, stock watch, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, he is, one last time, at Shane Half NFL. Ryan Reese at Philly Sports PSA. I am Dives. 
for Shane, for Ryan, for myself. We'll catch you on the next one. Stay awesome, everyone.